thank you Lord Jesus for the word about to be spoken is going to be anointed anoint your servant he comes from afar and he's tired but we ask you to empower him let your anointing be upon him in the name of Jesus Amen Amen I bid you greetings from Chicago, USA. Mbazanie inda motozi vuye Chicago, mura America. Where God lives. Ahu imani tu ye. He is here. He is here too. Ari kona hani rahari. Thank you very much for having us to come. Nga kose kutkwa chira neza uimugoroba. We're going to have a good time while we're here. In Jesus' name. I'd like to first introduce my wife. She, is, she has been with me for years and years. Yeah. Maybe... Maybe I could just have her to come and say a couple of words. I bring you greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are so honored that you have invited us here to share with you. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. Amen. In Christ, we are empowered to do the impossible. Amen. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And we are here to place a deposit in your heart that will bring you to the top. Our God is a great God. And he specializes in the impossible. Amen. Amen. I look forward to sharing this week with you. We love you. God bless you. She is a preacher too. Um, I want to also um, thank uh, Dr. Patricia Bailey Jones. Ndashaka gushimira Dr. Patricia Bailey Jones and her husband Attorney Daryl Jones. Numutkwale we Attorney Daryl Jones and thank them for um, orchestrating us being here. Ndashaka kubashima ko bateguye kugira ngo dushobore kuba turi hano uyu mwaka. Give them a hand. Mubakomera mashi. I want to also thank the pastor, the apostle of this house, and his lovely wife. You have great leadership in this house. Give them a hand. Please. I want to also thank all the pastors and ministers and also officials that have come out to be here tonight. Ndashaka gushimira abashumba, abavuga butumwa, abakozi b'Imana bose ndetse n'abakozi ba leta bari hano uyu mugoroba. Well, while I am here doing these 3 or 4 days. Igihe nzaba ndi hano imisi itatu ine. I came to announce to you. Naje kubamenyesha that Everything that has been hindering your progress will hinder you no more.
everything that has been standing in your way everything that has been delaying you everything that has been distracting you it will delay you distract you no longer it will it will stand in your way no longer. God is putting down everything that stood in your way. This is your time. This is the set time of the favor of God. You will not miss it. This is your time. And God is giving it to you now. Now stand up and give God a shout. Take your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to open your Bibles, please, to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. I don't know whether they can turn this up just a little bit. Yeah, up uh, high. so she can hear me clearly. Just Acts chapter 10. This scripture that I'm... Maybe that's too loud. This scripture that I'm going to read today is the theme for the whole time that I'm here. And it is Acts chapter 10. And start reading at verse 34. And through verse 35. Then Peter opened his, his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. In every nation. In the USA. In Mexico. Mexico. In Japan. And also in this nation. No Murichino Jihugu. In Rwanda. Rwanda, in every nation, he, he that feareth God and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Let me translate, is accepted with him. Here's what it means. Has the same access to his blessing. Has the same access to his blessing. Now, we flew in, in our own jet. That is a blessing. And somebody might say, the reason why you can do this is because you're from the United States. My friend, read the book. 
it says God is no respecter of persons but in every nation he that feareth God and worketh righteousness is accepted with him has the same access to his blessings. You have the same access to God's blessing as I have. I don't care whether you're from the United States whether you're from Rwanda Burundi Tanzania Uganda wherever you're from if you are accepted with him if you are a child of the living God you have the same access to his blessing now very interesting how you can be in a place of wealth and still be poor. What is the problem? Well, we're going to deal with that today. Whatever has been standing in your way, whatever has been blocking your progress, you will see it no more. This is your time. Whatever God has planned for your life shall come to pass. Now let's turn to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. In Isaiah 55. I'll start reading at verse 7. I'll read first and then she will read. Your name is Barbara. My name is Barbara. Barbara will read. Verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God. And he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither your ways my ways saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways and your ways. And my thoughts and your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Aramjiribambe, Agaruchire, Imana Yachukuko is a more ergo sepe. Ere give your nibgira, Sibjom nibgira, Kandin Zrazan, you since Sizim and Izanje, Nikuite Kavuga, Mokishu, Risumba, Isiniko in Zrazanje, Zisumbizanu, Nib your nibgira, Visumba, if your nibgira, Moko in for an ashere, give Imanu Kavim, Nizu, and Hibisubireo, Aho, Gobigato, Subuta, Kavuka, Mizimbuto, Bugatosha, Ningundu, Bugaha, Umubibji, Imbuto, Nushaka, Kurja, Bukamoha, Umutsima, Nikujam, Burganja, Rivam, Kanwakan. God is saying here uh, that your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways are not my ways. Notice what he said now. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. And because your thoughts are not my thoughts, your ways are not my ways. Now he is talking to his people. He is not talking to people that don't know him. In this particular case, he's talking to Israel. 
Now he's not saying that your thoughts cannot be my thoughts. Because of how humanity had fallen then the thoughts of humanity are not God's thoughts. So God has, bring us, has to bring us back to his way of thinking. And that's one of the first things that happened to us when we get born again. We next have to work on something called renewing of our minds. So God has to work through his word on renewing our thoughts. Now let me just give you an example. Um, there was a fish. Harurufi. And this fish was is a Parana. Ururufi rwitwa parana niko ruzwi. And this parana they did an experiment with him. Baje gukora ubushakashatsi kuri ururufi and put him in a fish tank. Barushira ahantu babika andi mafi. And they put some other small fish in that tank. Aho bahashize nutundi dufi duto. And the parana would get hungry and eat the fish. None ho rwa rufi runini rwashonja rukarya twatundi duto. So what they did is they put a plastic partition between the piranha and the fish. Now the piranha gets hungry and goes after the fish. But when he goes after the fish, the he hits this plastic divider. Uh, okay, now I want you to see this. This fish is in a fish tank. He gets hungry. But as he goes after the fish, he hits this plastic divider. He can see the fish. But he cannot get to them. He keeps hitting this divider. This wall. This happened for 30 days. One month. Then the man pulled the divider out of the tank. Now the piranha can get to the fish. But what happens? He begins to swim around in the fish tank. He wouldn't eat the fish. Some of the fish would even touch him and go up and rub on him. But he wouldn't eat them. Why? Because in his mind, he could not get to them. His mind had been programmed with a plastic divider. And his mind was telling him that he could not get to those fish. What happened to the piranha? The piranha starved to death. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 
Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Each one of us has a program written in our minds. Let's call it a script. It's the way you see things. <laughs> and it's a result of observation, association, and teaching. Mostly, it's the way other people see you. And not the way God sees you. So, we have in our mind this boundary. I'll never get to the USA. I'll never have my own automobile. I'll never have a large seven bedroom home. <laughs> I'll, I'll never have an airplane. Who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that? God did not tell you that. Because in every nation, those that fear him have the same access to his blessings. I'm telling you now, look at your life. And look how far you have gone in life. The enemy constantly wants to rescript the way God sees us. He, he might use relatives to do it. You might have had relatives that say, you're never going to be much. Even when you start making a step forward, somebody might say, where are you going? Let's say you have a dream or an idea of having a big business or a large ministry, and then the enemy will try to come and sabotage the dream. Well, I'm going to tell you something. What God has planned for your life, I decree, shall come to pass. All right, let me give you another example. You've probably heard this story before, but I'm going to tell you to you again. It's the story of the chicken and the eagle. What has happened? There was an eagle who laid an egg in a nest. And the nest was on the side of the mountain. While, while, the, while the eagle was away, a strong wind came. And it blew the egg out of the nest and it rolled down the mountainside. And it ended up in a chicken yard. Well, there was a chicken who saw this eagle egg. She, she, said, she said, I think I will sit on that egg. So she went over and she sat on this egg. And after three days, it hatched. And out comes a little eagle. 
And the little eagle was a little baby eagle. No, no, cha cha na chichi zucharu ruhinja. And the little eagle looked around, and all the eagle saw were chickens. No, no, cha cha zucharu wa chikaboni woko gusani mishkui. So this eagle began to imitate chickens. No, no, cha cha zujitangira kui gani mishkui. Now the eagle didn't know he was not a chicken. Ari ko ichi zuni chari chizi ko chitaru mushkui. Because he's been born around all chickens. I'm telling you that you've been born again in a chicken yard and God wants you out. There have been a lot of chickens around us. But you are not a chicken. You are a child of the living God. You are a joint heir with Jesus. You are a son of God. You are seated together with him in heavenly places. You've been redeemed from the curse of the law. And whatever God says about you shall come to pass. Hey! Hallelujah. So now, what happens? The chicken began to grow. The chicken got very large. And the next thing the chicken did, uh, the, the eagle began to grow. And the eagle got very large. But the eagle was still pecking off the ground like a chicken. Now, turn to another scripture. Proverbs chapter 4. Please. Proverbs chapter 4. Now, I could tell you a lot of things today. But I want to start off very simple. Because your mind it plays a significant part in your progress. I, I really believe the nation of Rwanda can be one of the greatest nations on the face of the earth. Proverbs chapter 4. Look what it says here in verse 23. Keep thine heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now, what does that mean? The, the writer says, Guard your heart. Because out of your heart are the issues of life. Let's say it another way. Out of your heart are the forces of life. Let's say it another way. Out of your heart are the boundaries of your life. The boundaries of your life are in your heart. Please hear this. This is a secret. Sometimes what we have thought is that what, how far we can go is, <laughs> what we have thought is how far we can go is based on what somebody else says about us. Please. Hear me. Guard your heart. Don't let the world system program your heart. Don't let other people tell you what you can be. 
Don't let other people tell you how far you can go. Let's look at one more scripture. Let's look at Matthew chapter 12, please. Nobody can tell Bill Winston how far he can go. People cannot tell me what I can be. People did not make me. God made me. God is the only one that knows and can tell me what I can do, where I can go, and what I can have. There were people that told me I cannot have a shopping mall. But God says you can. There are people that told me that I could never have a jet. But I flew over here in a jet. You see, people try to script your life. Because they have not gone anywhere they don't want you to go anywhere. And what you have to say, get thee behind me, Satan. I am going to fulfill the plan of God. You see, I came to let you know that everything God has planned for your life shall come to pass. Your days of failure are over. Your days of lack and poverty are over. This is your day. Turn to Matthew chapter 12, please. Hallelujah. 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 You see, some of you may not be accustomed to this because your mind has been scripted. But let me warn you as the prophet of God as an apostle of the Lamb I can decree a thing and it shall be a step. Let me remind you of a scripture. In 2 Kings and chapter 7. Israel had been starving. They had nothing to eat. Because they were surrounded by the Syrian army. And they would not let them out. And they were going to destroy Israel. And they were in there even cooking babies and eating them. The situation was desperate. But a prophet showed up. And this is what he said. Tomorrow about this time it shall be plenty and it shall be cheap. You see, that's all you need. 
One word from God will change your life forever. So he said that. And once he decreed that. That tomorrow those people who were poor were going to be rich. Well all of a sudden a man who worked for the king came up to him. He said why are you going to tell the people this? Why are you going to get their hopes up like this? If God would open up heaven himself there is no way things will change that quickly. And here's what the prophet told him. The prophet said, you will see it. But you will not partake of it. You see, God needs a believer. If he can get a believer, he can turn our entire nation. You know the story. There were four lepers sitting by the gate of Samaria. Here's what they said. Why are we going to sit here until we die? If we go in there with Israel, they're starving to death. If we're sitting here, we're going to starve to death. Well, why don't we go into the enemy's camp? And what did they do? They rose up and began to act on the word of God. And what did God do? The enemy heard noises. He thought armies were coming against them. And they said Israel has gotten together with Egypt. And they're coming against us. Let's get out of here. And they left the camp. But they left the gold they left the silver they left the horses they left the camels they left the donkeys they left the tents they left the food they left the clothes I'm telling you something you're about to see the biggest wealth transfer that's ever happened on the face of the earth hallelujah Now what am I saying? God did it. They didn't have to cause any violence. They didn't have to hate anybody. All they had to do is walk by faith. And not by sight. So what am I telling you now? No one can stop you from reaching your destiny but you let's go to the scripture hallelujah hallelujah you see remember this the devil hates Everybody. He has no favorites. If a person has been in this earth created by God, the devil hates them. Do you understand what I said? You see, God didn't give us that kind of spirit. See, faith worketh by love. You see, you, you, when we, when we get the abundance of God, we're going to help bless the nations of the earth. Look what I did. He blessed us with an airplane. What did I do with the airplane? I'm using it to bless you. Let 
let's look at this hallelujah hallelujah verse 35 a good man hallelujah matthew 12:35 35 a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure of the heart bringeth forth evil things Umuntu mwiza atanga ibyiza abikuye mu butunzi bwe bwiza no umuntu mubi atanga ibibi abikuye mu butunzi bwe bubi Now watch me Munyitegereze A good man Umuntu mwiza out of the good treasure of the heart mu butunzi bwo mu mutima bringeth forth good things Asohoramo ibintu byiza Watch this an evil man out of the evil treasure of the heart bringeth forth evil things. Notice if something is good or evil notice where it came from out of the heart out of the heart. So a good man so out of the good deposit of the heart brings forth good things. So what was in my heart came forth. My future is not in somebody's hands. My future is in my heart. So nobody can stop Bill Winston. But Bill Winston. God made it that way. No one. So from now on, you don't need to blame anybody. Let's look forward. Let's look to the future. Let's stop spending all of our time trying to blame somebody. We, we understand some things have happened. But God specializes in the impossible. God can take a life that has been counted out. He can take a person with no education and put them on top. Now, I am not against education. We have education. We have some of our people here that have good degrees from the finest universities in the, in some in the world. But, but stop making excuses. Hear what I'm saying now. Let me give you a little story. There was a man who ha. came to our ministries. One Wednesday night, we have a Wednesday night Bible study kind of like this. He came to the ministry. Araza. We had testimonies. He said, Pastor Winston, I would like to give a testimony, sir. I did not know him. I was very cautious. And I said, okay. And I gave him the microphone. Very cautiously. And he got the microphone. And this is what he said. I was in Joliet prison. I said, oh my Lord. He said, but I got born again. And I got released. 
and I started listening to Pastor Winston's tapes. Now I'm not saying it's just my tapes. It could be the apostles' tapes. But he's, he started listening to the word of God. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And because of it, your ways are not my ways. For as the rain cometh down from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and make it bud, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me but it shall accomplish that which I please it shall prosper wherever I have sent it so he got the word of God what happened he said I got a job cleaning uh, and mowing lawns and I was making $4.50 an hour. In the United States, that's very, very low. But he said, I kept listening. And I kept doing what he said. And I got another job making $12.50 an hour. Now he's getting on up there. He said, I want to let everybody know. Today, he said, I have my own business. I am making $30,000 a month. In my own business. Listen, listen now. I have a seven bedroom home. I have two Mercedes and a, a SUV and a Rolls Royce on order. He said, I have a uh, furniture and I have even a jacuzzi. Now he could not pronounce jacuzzi. He didn't he said jacuzzi. He could not pronounce it. But he had one. Now listen. What now? He said. But here is something I would like to share with you. I have never learned to read or write. My friends. Education is important. But I don't care what your level is. Nothing or nobody can stop you from reaching your destiny but you. Notice what he did not do. He didn't look back at his prison experience. Why? Because the Bible says forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth to those things that are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. You might have had some bad experiences in the past. But don't let the bad experiences keep you from the good experiences. Now, if you have a bad script, 
Nimba ufiti nyandi kumbi mumutuko wao. If somebody has scripted your thinking. Nimba haru munu wandi tsuburi utechereza. I'm going to show you how to rewrite your own script. Turn to, turn to Joshua chapter 1. Mm. -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh yeah. This is your day for a miracle. Joshua. Joshua. Chapter 1. I'll start reading verse at first at verse 5. This is for you. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. I will not fail you and I will not forsake you. Hallelujah. Na muntu numwe warinda kuguhagarara imbere imisi yose yo kubaho kwawe nkuko nabanaga na Mose niko nzabana nawe sinzagusiga kandi sinzaguhana Nobody nta muntu will be able to stop you from now on no matter who they are how much money they have what they're thinking is they will not be able to stop you because you are headed to the promised land. Hallelujah. Everything God said about you in this Bible shall come to pass. He said you are the head and not the tail. You are the lender and not the borrower. You are above and not beneath. This is your day. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Then let it be so. One more verse. And I'm done. How many of you believe that I came to give you a word from God? Look what it says in verse 8. Uh-oh. God just told me to tell you something. Your days of struggling are over. Oh. Verse 8. Now, we've got to rescript our lives. Because when my friend came out of jail, he was in jail because he, a bad script was in his life. So many people in here may not be in jail, but you're in bondage. But that bondage is now broken. And your life is being rescripted by the word of God. Now look at this. Hallelujah. Oh, glory! Hallelujah. Somebody in here is ready for a miracle. I mean a miracle from God. I mean a miracle from God. My Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now, 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 let me tell you. You, as a human being, are the only creation that is self-programmable. Nothing else can do that. You can reprogram your own thinking. And he's telling you the way to do it. Meditation. Not just hearing my sermon one time. But picking out a word that you can meditate. And when you meditate, meditation brings revelation. And revelation brings manifestation. I'm here to tell you right now, your days of struggling are over. From this day forward, you shall meditate the word of God. It's going to bring you into revelation that you never had before. And God's going to manifest his promises in your life. How many of you are ready for a change? This is your season of change. Watch this. Let me give you an example. One day, when we were finishing having our Sunday services, I came out of the building that we were having our services in. And I looked across the street. And there was this huge shopping mall. God says, buy that. I thought I was hearing things. That was too big for my thinking. I said, Lord, how am I going to make that happen? He said, Joshua 1.3. Meditated. And I took Joshua 1.3. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given to you. And as I begin to meditate it, one day it exploded inside of my heart. Now remember what I said. Your future is not in my hand. Your future is in your heart. My future is not in your hand. My future is in my heart. So what happened? All of a sudden, that shopping mall that was very big began to get small. Why? Why? It did not change. I changed. Now, today, grocery stores, Kmart, Taco Bell, they all pay us rent. Isn't that wonderful? Now what am I saying? 
Let's go back to Acts chapter 10. Now let's read that. Based upon what I've told you. Based upon what I've told you. Because some of you are still saying. You are just blessed like that because you came from the America. Let's go back to Acts chapter 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 10. And look at verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. You see, he's no respecter. What he did for Bill Winston, he'll do for you. Any man or any woman that is in Christ becomes a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Let me show you something. You were made in God's image. If I have a pitcher of water and I have a glass, let me show you. Give me a water and I need a glass. Can you do, it? do it? Is there a glass somewhere? Did, did anybody bring a glass with them? Just trying to get a glass. I want to show you this. You see, I don't want you to ever forget what we're saying here. I think they're going to get me a glass. No, 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 no. Jesus is the king of kings. See, you've got to stop letting other people tell you who you are. God calls you a king. You are royalty. Oh, I can't, I can't be that. Alright, then you just stay where you are. Okay, I am royalty. When you get blessed, don't forget. Be a blessing. God bless you.